Trapmore gang, today we are going to answer a question that has dogged the hip hop industry for decades now. What is the fastest way to the top of the rap game? Some people have suggested many conspiracies over the years. Oh, the only way to make it as a rapper is to get in bed with the record labels, become some sort of industry plant. Maybe a fake relationship with another famous female is what you need to go to the very top. Jay-Z and Beyonce, Nicki Minaj and Meek Mill, ah, that one doesn't kind of work. But over the last few years, it seems like there is one cheat code, one shortcut that seems seems to be the absolute perfect trick to becoming a poppin' rapper in absolutely no time, killing somebody. Yes, it's almost as if you need a blood sacrifice to make it in the rap game, because there are countless examples of rappers who have been forced by circumstance, or even their own bloodthirst, to take a life. And in my opinion, it's often the case that after killing somebody, rappers see career success on a level that they couldn't have even dreamed. So today, we're gonna answer once and for all, is the best way to kill it in the rap game to quite literally kill somebody. And to do that, that, we're going to be taking a look at a video from the YouTube channel Lyrical Central called Rappers That Are Killers to find out which rappers have taken lives and then we're going to follow up to determine whether or not it was popping somebody that got their career truly popping. Starting off with TK who's been involved in crime for a long time. The story's pretty long and it can be kind of complicated but basically what happened was back in 2016 he was one of seven people involved in a home invasion where two people were shot. One of the victims ended up dying from the shooting. Not too long after he realized he couldn't beat the case so he did the race cutting off his ankle monitor and making a run for it. But even while on the run from police, TK couldn't resist falling back into his bad habits. This is when he allegedly broke into a house in San Antonio for a robbery and ended up murdering a 23-year-old man. Well, this is a pretty obvious one, right? TK, he caught a body, or he was at least involved in a home invasion that led to a murder. But during this time, whilst on house arrest, TK famously cut off his ankle monitor and did the race, running away from authorities, and releasing a song about running away from authorities called The Race. Now, as far as before and after, this one's pretty clean cut. TK was not in before he did this murder and it was quite literally the killing, the story around it and the release of the song The Race that brought TK to anyone's attention because we'd have never freaking heard of this dude otherwise. Today, TK's The Race is sitting at over 222 million views. Meanwhile, the most notable song that he had dropped before that murder took place, Biff Zanon, is today sitting at a comfy 580,000 views. If you don't already know the story regarding the time Gucci Mane pulled the trigger on someone, it basically started back in May of 2005. Basically, Gucci had been visiting a female friend when four men, all dressed in black, burst into her apartment. The men assaulted Gucci and a fight broke out. One of their bodies was found outside a nearby middle school, and Gucci was arrested, faced a first-degree murder charge as a result. In the end, the charges were dropped when the prosecution came to terms with the fact that there simply wasn't enough evidence to disprove Gucci's claim of self-defense. Yes, next up is Gucci Mane, who, if you didn't know, ended up killing somebody in self-defense following a botched home invasion shortly after rival rapper Young Jeezy put a bounty on Gucci Mane's chain. Now, this incident where Gucci Mane took another man's life was all the way back in May. 2005. This was super early in Gucci Mane's career, and only weeks on from the release of his very first single, Icy, with Young Jeezy, the track that they ended up feuding over, leading to the circumstances where Gucci Mane would have to kill somebody defending himself. In 2005, Gucci Mane had only released the one album, Trap House, landing on the US Billboard 200 Albums charts at position 101. Since then, Gucci Mane has gone on to release over a dozen albums and quite literally countless mixtapes. The follow-up to Trap House Hard to Kill moved 160 65,000 copies. And although since then there's been a few moments where Gucci Mane's career has taken the odd dip, generally ever since this incident went down, it has been nothing but up from Gucci, especially since his most recent release from prison. Frankly, it's been nothing but W's for Gucci. In November of 2018, DaBaby was involved in a hectic situation that broke out in a Walmart. The official story is that while he was shopping for clothes with his family, two people came up to him and tried to rob him. A fight broke out, and according to DaBaby, he was left with no choice but to protect himself and his family by shooting one of the people attacking him. The charges were eventually dropped when a witness failed to appear in court. But three months later, the witness did eventually testify and DaBaby was sentenced to one year of unsupervised probation. All in all, we take DaBaby's word for it, the situation could have ended up way worse if he hadn't a shot. Next up, DaBaby. If you're a follower of my main channel, you'll be well aware of the story of how DaBaby legally killed a man in Walmart in self-defense following an attempted robbery on him whilst he was out shopping with his young children. But the funny thing is, before this incident, a lot of people would have had absolutely no idea who the hell DaBaby was, and in many ways it was the attention and the kudos that he got from being involved involved in this incredibly real ass situation that made a lot of people fall in love with DaBaby and his music. So the fatal Walmart shooting that DaBaby was involved in actually took place on November the 6th, 2018. At this point in DaBaby's career, DaBaby was fresh off of the release of his latest mixtape, Blank Blank, which still holds up and is still absolute fire, by the way. And he'd released a whole bunch of mixtapes in the lead up to this, but at this point, he had never really had any kind of real commercial success or breakthrough moment. Within only a few months of this incident going down, 
DaBaby would go on to release his iconic project, Baby on Baby, an absolute classic in my opinion, which would go on to go platinum, with this project catapulting DaBaby to the very top of the rap game. Since then, he's released two more albums which have both gone platinum, and releasing his hit single, Rockstar with Roddy Rich, which went number one in the United States on the Billboard charts, and held that position down for a whopping seven weeks. Today, Snoop Dogg is a cultural icon who shows up in commercials and on TV shows pretty regularly. Back in the 90s, he was one of the baddest gangsters out there. He was involved with the Crips, and he kept being dragged into street-related drama during his rise. An argument broke out between Snoop's friend and the rival gang member, and soon after, he pointed the pistol at them. His friend started shooting at the rival gangster, and Snoop took off in the car with him. The situation is what led to Snoop being accused of first-degree murder. The case eventually ended with Snoop and his friend being acquitted because the evidence had been tampered with too much to come to a conclusion of exactly how everything went down that day. So, back in 1993, Snoop Dogg and his bodyguard were charged with murder after an altercation where Snoop and the deceased man had exchanged words. In the end, Snoop and his bodyguard ended up being acquitted of the murder, and what's interesting is that this incident went down in 1993 while Snoop Dogg was recording his album Doggy Style, but he didn't end up getting acquitted until 1996. So in the space between the alleged murder going down and Snoop being acquitted, Snoop had basically gone all the way to the top, releasing his Doggy Style album, which went number one on the US Billboard charts, and going platinum numerous times over, followed by his The Dogfather project, which released after his acquittal. That went number one, platinum numerous times over, and ever since that case where Snoop Dogg and his bodyguard were accused of murder, Snoop Dogg has gone on to become quite literally one of the biggest legends the rap game has ever seen, and thankfully, he is still alive to this day, dropping songs, doing interviews, counting checks, and living life as one of the biggest OGs that the rap game has ever spawned. YNW Melly, similar to Tech A, is another rapper who's been breaking the law since he was a teenager. Basically, this all started in February 2019, when Melly was arrested for the alleged murder of his two best friends. The case has been in progress for quite a while now, but there hasn't been much development regarding what may happen to Melly. In addition to the case of Melly murdering his two best friends, He's also being investigated for being connected to the death of an off-duty sheriff deputy in 2017. YNW Melly. Now with this one, he's not actually been convicted yet, but he has said in numerous songs that he is a murderer, that he murders, and it's possible that he might not end up beating this case. YNW Melly was indeed absolutely killing it before he was hauled away to jail and accused of murder, with him being arrested and charged in February 2019. At this point in his career, he had already released Blue Balenciagas for real, Melly the Melis, Butter Pecan, and Slang That Iron with all of those tracks having view counts in the tens of millions before he was arrested for murder. Because on the 8th of February 2019, only four days before YNW Melly turned himself in on double murder charges, the music video for his track Murder On My Mind was sitting at a pretty healthy 84 million views on YouTube. But today, around two and a bit years later, and with a double murder accusation under his belt, YNW Melly's Murder On My Mind is sitting at a whopping 455 million views. Now, if that isn't enough proof that doing a murder is the best music marketing tactic in the entire world, then I don't know what is. What do you guys think? Is catching a body the best way to catapult yourself to the top of the rap game? Or is it just a complete coincidence that whenever rappers catch a body, their careers go into overdrive and people like me need to stop capping? Let me know down in the comments. And for the record, I obviously don't condone murders, killings, violence. Why can't we all just release good music, not have to catch any bodies, and just walk off happily into the sunset with our racks and jewellery. I don't know. There's no such thing as curses and Kanye's a lizard person. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you like and subscribe below. Shout out to the patrons. Oh, I always get the wrong side. Shout out to the patrons for supporting this channel. You guys are some legends. Trap more gang. That's how we do. See you next time. Bye.